Howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it is time for something a little bit different, not Path of Exile today. Uh, this is a game that I used to play a lot, uh, Dungeons and Dragons Online, used to be quite obsessed with it. Uh, it's gone pretty pay to cheat, which means I don't play it anywhere near as much as I used to, uh, but it's still a reasonable game. This is just an example of one quest in it. Uh, this is Vault of Night Part 3 on the Epic Hard difficulty. Uh, the epic part means that it's, for, that it's an alternate version of the quest for high-level characters, and uh, the hard used to, well, used to mean hard. These days, it's pretty easy, especially given my character is somewhat over-leveled for this quest, uh, but this is not a powerful soloing character. I'll actually struggle a little bit with it because this game is very much is much more group-oriented than Path of Exile is. Uh, as a trap that will set off at this point. Uh, a lot of these I just saw from memory. I'm having played this so much better. The game is better than it is now. I'm playing a crowd control oriented um, fighter that's... A fighter class in this game is a reasonably... Um, reasonable hybrid of offense and defense that has a few uh, crowd control abilities as well. Uh, I'll just demonstrate here, this is a stunning blow. Uh, causes the monster to be incapacitated for a period and to also uh, take more damage. Uh, this is a trip attack, which uh, obviously didn't hit anything with it, but they're both on medium cooldowns. One of the things this game does well is storyline inside quests. Uh, you'll hear that there's the DM voiceover. It's intended to evoke a feeling of Dungeons and Dragons games. As the gate grinds open, a glass scorpion screams at the man. Being smart by monsters that are, um, that are on a ledge, they're intelligently placed. So that ice storm effect there, you see there's that red circle on the ground with the ice crashing in it. Uh, that's an enemy's persistent AoE spellcast. It's a spell that I could use if I was playing spellcaster class. And they're being fired from here. I can't actually get up there without, um, well, not without a bit of trickery. So I'm just going to let those monsters stay there. Storyline of this quest is part of a chain where uh, you're trying to assemble a thieving crew. Uh, the reason being that a uh, that a dragon polymorphed into the shape of a human has uh, gone and ensconced herself inside the vault of one of the most powerful noble houses. You're fighting on behalf of the noble house in this in this chain. You're trying to break into their vault, which is perceived to be an impossible task, and so you're trying to dig up a, or trying to combine a thieving crew to go in there, and each of them has some sort of personal quest they want you to do. These are all the I mentioned something about difficulty settings before, there's a huge difference in monster hit points between the different settings. And monsters will cast nasty uh, debuffs on you. You've just got three negative levels, which is a um, relatively serious debuff that will go away on its own, but only over an extended time period. Basically makes me 15% worse at everything. And it's just before I'm about to get hit by a trap. Some classes can disarm traps. I know from past experience that there's a quite fiendish trap here. And I'm just going to tank it. And use my big self heal. Which I can only use once per rest. I also have a slower self heal, which is that um, AoE on the ground there that's fairly faint. Actually, shouldn't really be bothering with these chests as um, there's nothing could conceivably be good in them at this point in the game, this life. It's just out of. So 
that's negative levels again. I've used my only ability to activate the cure them that I have, which is on a 10 minute cooldown. I'm going to swap around gear to make myself resistant against getting more of them. And, uh, actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to need that later. I'm just going to have to endure them. I've got a poison icon over my head at the moment. I'm just not that concerned about it. Poison is very serious in this game outside one or two exceptions. That's what that um, stupid green thing is. Even though I'm a fighter, I can use a... I've got the skill called Use Magic Device, which allows me to use a lot of other classes' um, skills. It's somewhat of an overpowered skill in this game, it always has been. And I'm just going to demonstrate by firing off a um, heal scroll on myself. So that's a consumable that cures that. I could also use a consumable if I was packing them to deal with my negative levels, uh, the three of them, but um, stand amidst I don't have one. Of terrible slaughter. The inevitable I'm going to set off my big cooldown at this point. Down to six negative levels, that's too many. I've got to use my uh, protective item. You see signs of ancient. So I'm running there and getting the. Uh, Focusing on certain monsters that are more dangerous. And at this point, I'm going to preserve the remaining charges on my Iron Stone, which is the um, anti spellcast defensive item that I have. There is another one that I've got. Oh, that's what it is. It's been so long since I've played this that I've forgotten some of the things in it. So there's a mini boss there, there's a bunch of mini bosses in this dungeon, it's why it's so popular to run. And each mini boss that you kill um, gives you experience points. At least in this dungeon there's there's little quest objectives to, that come up that are optional to kill them. Again, I'm just stunning the spellcasters. Spellcasters are much more dangerous than archers or melee combatants. So I'll go trip this guy. While he's on the ground. Free beat down. This is a dead end, I don't need to go down. But... I'm using a weapon that's um, Ray Bolt that has a very high chance to get critical strikes. You might notice huge variance in the damage that I do, and that's the reason. That's a sort of out of date raid loot. Well, it's, it's one of the few things that's held up well over the years. Oh, I've just been hit by CC myself. Monsters can use all the same CC as we have. Some of them have their own as well. that greater command again. Actually struggle to get out of, to resist that. One thing in this game, you'll notice that the I'm getting experience points when I kill certain mini bosses like that guy. Um, but the majority of your XP is, is not from killing monsters, it's from actually completing entire dungeons. Uh, this quest has unusually high XP for optionals, and even then, if you have a look here, I've got um, 10,000, I've got about 19,000 so far, and I'm looking at getting double that when I complete the quest, which will take an efficient group about about 9 minutes. Uh, I'm certainly not efficient at the moment, I've just been not playing for so long that I've got a lot of the things that are effective.
Now, one thing that happens in this game, um, basically nothing automatically heals in it. So, uh, so your spell points don't regenerate at all by themselves under normal gameplay. Uh, there's an exception for explicit spellcaster classes that are at very low spell points. Uh, your hit points don't recover, and various debuffs that you cop are uh, slow to regenerate as well. Rest shrines like that one uh, cure you of pretty much everything that's affecting you. There's also a resurrection shrine. If you're dead, you can be carried by another player, and they can take your corpse the there. Now I'm about to enter a particularly dangerous area of this quest. Uh, I'm using a protective item that's specific to this area. I mean, it can work anywhere, but it's it's designed to prevent you from the most dangerous abilities that these beholders have. I bet there are uh, Dungeons and Dragons monster that's one of the iconic things from pen and paper D&D. They have a whole lot of nasty attacks, and they're um, they're pretty fearsome. But not as bad as um, not as bad when you're sort of as as OP as we are in this game compared to them. We're good at resisting their abilities. One of those rays is an instant death spell that um, I'm immune to because of a fairly common defensive item. Another one is negative levels, uh, as I was mentioning before, that make they stack, they make you 5% worse at, any, at everything. And um, they also have a number of other nasty little tricks. Like that telekinesis. But at least I killed that one. Okay. You wouldn't... If you were... Doing this in a speedrun environment, you wouldn't full clear all of these beholders. Uh, there's a quest objective that I need to get in here, but solo I don't like leaving a beholder alive behind me. Not that they'll follow you very far, but just while I'm looking for these um, these runes I need to find in here, there's three runes I need to press. Uh, in this quest they're in six specific locations, so you'll just get three at random out of the six. And I'm using a um, little trick to find them. Ah, oh, there we are. You can tab target in this game, and it's the easiest way to find interactable objects that are um, not immediately apparent on your screen. I thought the third one was there. It'll give me a vague idea of where it is. It's probably up high. No, there it is. Oh, it's that location. For some reason, I was expecting it to be there too long since I've played. The clusters of giant mushrooms grow more sparse as you emerge from the. Yeah, I'm hot swapping domain. equipment. Uh, I want an item of Featherfall at the moment. I don't usually like this skill. Um, it makes you fall very slowly. Most players keep it permanently equipped. I'm one of the uh, contrary people that finds that the increased control of being able to um, of falling fast is preferable to me. This, you'll see this character's uh, name is in red, that means he's a boss. He's not the overall boss of the quest, he's a uh, mini boss status. And on epic hard difficulty the bosses aren't particularly durable. They become a bit more durable on epic elite. The purpose of coming up here was actually primarily to get the um, XP for killing him. Water into the air nearby. Almost finished the quest at this point. To lift a heavy weight. Uh, there's a sort of a wave encounter here. Stun the uh, stun the spellcaster. Trying to get to the 
priest at the back. One thing about this game are the AI and the monsters. It's not brilliant, but the uh, the spellcasters do know to stick back and to crowd control you. That one there that says Skybound over his head, he's a um, he's got a random he's had a random control that's made him more dangerous than normal. Those are always the priority targets. They only appear on hard and higher difficulty settings, and they're much more common on, on elite. And now we have a, a f sort of mini boss encounter of sort of the second last boss of the, of the dungeon. This was once a terribly difficult fight, and um, uh, just character power has increased so much that no longer really need to respect it that much. I've been hit with an exhaustion effect at the moment. Uh, that significantly reduces my character's speed. I'm gonna swap equipment at this point because I need um, I need an item on that will regenerate spell points when I take when I suffer damage. Although I'm not a spellcaster, I do have um, spell points. And they are um, used on this character to this power the skill consecration, uh, which if this boss was tougher, I would need on him. Chose a dramatic battleground for her it's, last a, stand <clears throat> the it's a holy and fire AoE on the ground that heals you whilst damaging enemies. So it heals for your friends and damages your enemies. This is the final boss of this dungeon. It's actually a pretty straightforward fight. He's got a high degree of resistance if you know he's not chaotic, and mine is not. However, he's just so squishy that that doesn't really matter. He adds a key thing to kill. I forgot they existed. That is just really strong. just get rid of that blindness with my big cooldown heal, self heal. And you'll notice that I received 47,000 XP there, which in this game is a, is a modest amount. In any case, that's uh, one dungeon in this game. The, problem with, the problems with this game, I mentioned that it's gone heavily pay to cheat, and also this is its in-game grouping system, which is much more active than Path of Exiles. Unfortunately, the servers are just so depopulated especially at Australian peak times, that it's difficult to get groups uh, together in any serious way. Uh, it's a pity because this, this is a very much a game that you want to be grouping in. I just get an end reward, I'm forgetting the, what the criteria were. Just take the, um, the ones that I'll need to bypass having to purchase an item from the cash store at a later point. Anyways, I just thought I'd demonstrate game that I used to be obsessed with and still occasionally pop into. Um, there are some great people at play at, but there's just not, not very many. Uh, I can't really recommend this game that much because, as I mentioned, the degree of paid cheating in it. And if I just bring up the in-game store, uh, one of the worst offenders is, uh, in, in Path of Exile terms, uh, these items, let me just find them, character... Just looking for where they are. I think they're in the sales tab. Not a consistently on sale item. Oh no, they're in new to store. So this improved auto, epic auto's irresistible box. I think in Path of Exile terms, you would say that this would be a uh, maybe sixty dollar consumable that jumps your character. It completes all of the storyline quests for you, uh, and also jumps you to level 75. No, actually higher than 75, uh, probably 85. Um, and if you're already 85, it gives you a considerable chunk of XP. So say 85 to 90, 
90 to 92 or 92 to 93. Say what you might expect from running, say, 10 Zoff's Purified Breach Stones if you're already high level. The other thing that makes this even worse is that this is a game where once you hit high level, uh, its level cap is probably more in tune with about what level 90 is in Path of Exile. Uh, so when you hit level 30, which is a level cap, um, the game is heavily about reincarnation, which basically would be like in Path of Exile, you hit level 90, then you're allowed to restart your character, even as a new class, but you keep a slight permanent bonus from your previous life. Uh, so imagine that you start again as a level 1 character on the Twilight Strand, but you start at with one more passive point. And so a lot of the game tends to be about sort of cycling up to level cap, then back again, up to level cap, then back again, and they keep introducing new forms of reincarnation. Um, this ends up being an incredibly grindy, incredibly uh, grindy game as a result of that. And so I wouldn't recommend getting into it. You'd be so far behind other players that um, you know you'll feel considerably weaker than someone like me. I've you know was never a, f a past life fiend, but let's see what I have here. So that's um, three, three epic past lives there. Um, one, for that once, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven past lives, and yeah, so you're looking at twelve, um, so something like thirteen past lives that I've got which is actually not very many for someone that used to be obsessed with this game. Um, I like to stay at... When I played, I stayed at Endgame, which was the less effective way to progress your character. In any case, I um, thought people might be interested in, in having a look at this. Um, and if you do decide to, to have a look at it, then by all means, um, send, me, you know, send me a message if you want to say hello. I play on the Kaiba server, and I'm usually on... I'm, I'm on Australian times when I play, but not very often. Anyways, that's all I've got. Have a good one.